Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Daz and if you're new to this channel, I produced videos related to engineering and dabble in sort of new tech. In today's video, I want to go through the structural engineering books which I own and also give you some guidance on what useful documents or guides you should be reading. Spoiler alert, I don't own very many books. So I own a grand total of five books. Um, three of these books, yeah, these were hand-me-downs, uh, which were given to me by my first manager. I've got the uh, manual for design of plain masonry buildings, design of steelwork and reinforced concrete structures. And the only one I actually use is the, uh, the green one. And um, these are only for old British standard codes. And the only reason I still use this is because I can never remember the edge distance from the edge of a pile to the edge of a foundation, which I think is 150 mil. But for some reason, I just can't remember it. And I always just refer to this green book. Uh, the next book which I bought with my own money was this reinforced concrete design book by Bill Mosley, John Bungie and Ray Hulse. Um, this is a really, really, really good book. I went to a concrete course and um, he kept referencing this book. So I thought, you know, I'll, I'll check it out, I'll buy it. And I, I think I ended up buying it online from either Australia or New Zealand because it actually worked out cheaper to buy it over there and pay for the extra sort of delivery and postage than it was to buy from Amazon. I think Amazon was selling for like 45 pounds. I think I might have paid something around 30 pounds. So yeah, you know, say 10 to 15 pounds is not bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really highly recommend this book if you um, need some extra sort of design examples or guidance on reinforced concrete. And the last book I own is this um, structure, en structure engineer's pocket book, or as I refer it to as the, the red book because it's red. Um, and this has um, been really heavily used and is actually the only book you need to buy in my opinion. Um, all the other books you can get from online sources, like all, all the books I've just mentioned, even the, the old ones updated to Eurocodes, not British standards. Um, if your company has IHS, you can just search for it and you can just download it and use it then. Um, this is the only book which I carry around with me. I can pretty much design, um, or well, not design everything, but I can scheme a lot of structures and projects with just a calculator and, and this book, pen and pen, pen and pencil really. So this is a really, really useful book because it's just got quick references to everything. I was once told a story from my old director that um, that he only took this red book in with his, into his um, iStruct T exam. And he, he, he said uh, some of the other guys were bringing sort of boxes or trolleys worth of like reading material. And if you've taken, or well, if you know anything about the iStruct T exam, the hardest part about the exam is that it's heavily time constrained. So you don't have time to go trawling through all your textbooks to find an answer. The good thing about using the red book only is it's, you know, once you're familiar with it, you'll know everything you need to know really quickly and where to find it in the book. Um, so yeah, my director, he basically just passed the exam with only using this book as a reference, everything else um, it, it just had in his head, basically. The, the red book was actually bought by my company. Um, it's not even that expensive. So, it, and I really recommend that um, people in university just go out and, and buy it. I think it's something like 20 pounds maybe for the paperback version. And it's it's so worth it. It will last you like years and years. Um, so I really highly, highly recommend it. And if, you know, if you're working and your company, you know, won't buy you one, again, just, just go out and buy it, buy it for yourself. It, it is really, really worth it. And I, this is the one thing I carry in my bag, really. I was fortunate enough that my company had its own sort of little library where it, they, they had purchased a lot of sort of um, guides and, and books for us all to like freely use. Um, annoyingly, this, this concrete book, which I bought, I was the only one in my, in my whole um, office that had it. So it, it got passed around a lot, which is a bit annoying. But um, yeah, it, it just proves that it is a really, really useful textbook. Um, some other books which I don't own, but I've sort of um, read when I was a graduate is the 
steel designer's manual. It's a massive book. Um, probably wouldn't recommend buying it because it is quite expensive and you probably don't need it. I, I actually don't really use it because I, I'm used to using other sources of references for my steel design. Um, but if you're just starting out and um, you need a quick reference of pretty much everything there is to do with steel, the Steel Designer's Manual is um, a really good book to look at. The next one is the, what I think I call it, the, um, the, the Purple Book, which is Design of Structural Elements. Um, you can buy this on Amazon. Um, and it's a really, really useful book for young engineers. It contains a lot of design examples, quite basic ones, but a lot of them for all the four main materials. And I, it also covers British standards and Euro codes. Um, and I use this a lot um, early on in my career. The next is the iStruct D manual. So these these manuals, but updated to Eurocodes. These are really, really good. Um, not just the materials, but they iStruct D produce a lot of sort of short books and guides. Um, so they're really, really easy to digest and read. So I highly recommend checking them out as well. Um, and the next one, which I still use really, really often, probably more often than this for concrete design, and that's the um, How to Design Concrete Structures to Eurocode 2 by Concrete Centre. Uh, and I said, it, this is my go-to book. Um, it doesn't have design examples, but it offers design procedures in like a, like a flow chart, and it's just really, really well laid out and really easy to follow. So these are the most um, common books or guides that I use, but I don't necessarily own. But if your company has IHS, then you can just freely go and, and download them and use them um, digitally. Um, the choice to purchase books will be up to you. Uh, if your company doesn't have a subscription to IHS, then you might consider buying some of these books. I understand that it is really handy to own a physical copy, but in my opinion, a lot of these books and guides will work fine just digitally. Like you don't really need to make additional comments or notes within the books. Um, the only book I really recommend is, is just the Red Book, as it's just so handy to have it sort of next to you on your desk all the time. I haven't included any of the codes of practice because I think that's just obvious that you need to be using them. So hopefully this video has been helpful uh, for people wondering what sort of books or guides to, to sort of read in their early stage of the career. I've put in the description all the books that I've mentioned if you want to purchase them or if you just need a reference to find them online. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and uh, see you next time. Thank you.